I'll take your old single shot, but I gotta have some money, too. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, you sir. Get some money. Uh -huh. Me, too. Uh -huh. See you later. All right. How much for this in here? Twenty-five and a yours. Yes, sir. Colonel Colt's finest. It's yours, forty dollars. Forty dollars? That's a lot of money. A neat pattern of lead. Them's blue? That's just a kit. That's black beaver. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Pretty nice gun. Forty dollars. How about thirty-five? Nope. I gotta have forty dollars. That's a fine forty-four. You won't find another one out here. Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty high. You're gonna have to make up your mind. Here comes a whiskey wagon. Good idea. <laughs> About time. I sure need a drink. Just help on the boat. Come on. Yeah, I don't need a Look out, boys, look out. Let me see. Oh, it's a girl. It's her shoulder, Katie. The other one's down here. Oh, you're hurt. Jim Ben, come on, get her up to my room. Be careful with her now. She ain't no sack of potatoes. Easy. Easy does it. There now, watch her shoulder. Careful of the ramp. I'll get the door. Let's send to this other one. Whiskey back out of the wagon. Look at that, right in the heart. Yeah. He looks like a no account to me. We better get him over to Jake's for a pine box. Who is he? Never seen him before. Watch out now. Come on, make way now. Step back here. Put a ride on the bed. Careful with her now. Easy does it. Set her down easy. That's it. Poor kid. Well, quit your gawking. Go on, get out of here. We got some doctoring to do. Don't need anybody else watching. Close the door on your way out. Hi, honey. My name's Katie. I'm sort of the wife and mother around here, if you know what I mean. What's your name, sugar? Charlie. Charlotte Brewer. Where you from, Charlotte Brewer? And what you doing in this awful get-up? I'm from a long way from here, and I was... Uh -uh. Sorry, honey, I gotta get this cold out of the way. It's okay, I'll be quiet. Looks like the bullet's gone clean through. That's good. I can have this fixed up better than new. Feels better already. Why don't you just tell me about yourself while I'm working on your shoulder? Take your mind off this pain. Who was that man you killed, honey? And what'd he do to you? Is he dead? I suppose I always knew I'd kill him if I met him. But I was hoping I'd never see him again. And now I've killed someone. Well, now, honey, he would have killed you if you hadn't killed him first, wouldn't he? still doesn't make it right, but it was for my pa. Why don't you tell me about it from the very beginning? I grew up in St. Louis, and when I was 15, my pa left us to go out west 
to look for gold. Ma and me stayed behind, but she died three years later. So I wrote to Pa. He told me to come out west and live with him. It sounded so exciting. So I boarded the train with a one-way ticket west. As we sat by the campfire that first evening, we spoke about the years since we'd last been together. I told him about Mother and the friends back home and about my schooling. He spoke of how, since coming west, he'd been a hunter, an army scout, and now a miner whose luck wasn't very good. My father was a stranger to me. I wondered how we'd get along and whether this new life in the wilderness would suit me. We rose very early the next morning, and there was a chill in the air. Time to get up, Charlotte. There was a long way to travel that day and a dangerous river to cross.
The river was swift and very cold, being fed by high mountain streams. Storms miles up the canyon could cause the waters to rise three to four feet in a matter of minutes. For that reason, Father always took his horses across first. Then the wagon was towed across with a rope. In that way, the chances of losing everything were much less. However, the weather was bright and clear, and we felt no cause for concern. Come and help me unhitch the horses. Don't dawdle, girl. It's cold. The supplies we loaded on the horses were mostly new tools and explosives that Pa had bought for the mine while traveling to meet me. Enough was left in the wagon to weight it firmly against the river bottom and prevent the fast-moving waters from carrying it away. We unloaded the supplies and prepared to bring the wagon across by means of the rope tied to the horses. I've got a bad feeling about the river. Maybe just my imagination. <laughs> I was one sorry-looking city girl. Nope. While I dried my skirt in the warm sun, Pa arranged the rope for towing the wagon across the river. I was constantly amazed by his knowledge and confidence in dealing with the physical world. To a protected city girl, it all seemed so beyond understanding. the wagon creeping across, carrying my precious belongings. Pa called it Foofara, saying I had enough clothes for a family of ten. Come on, Molly! Come on! Get up there! The river was rising. There must have been storms in the mountains the night before, and the floodwaters were just arriving. <laughs> the horses strained against the powerful force of the rising flood. The wagon wouldn't move. Pull! Ah! Then suddenly... Pull oh, the wagon! The wagon! Ah. Come on, Red. Come on, Molly. Come on. Get up. Ah. Get up. <laughs> My trunk! It was gone. The rapids downstream would smash everything to pieces. My break with the past was complete. It took two long, foot-sore days to get to Paz Valley. The horses were not pack animals, so we rested them often. I would be much relieved when the journey was over. Yeah. 
My new home was a cabin set solidly against the mountainside. It was small, but afforded warmth and snug protection against the long mountain winters, and with a feminine touch, it would do just fine. Enough of the supplies were saved to allow us to eat and for the mining to continue. Welcome home, Charlotte. I think you'll like it here. It's been good to me. I got something for you. Among those supplies was a brand new gun for me. I knew nothing about guns, but Pa convinced me of the necessity for learning to shoot well, and I insisted on an immediate lesson. Seek to charge firmly. Cock it back, put on the cap. Set the hammer down easy. Now you're ready to go. Up against your shoulder. Line up the sights. Hit the circle on the tree. Beginner's luck. <laughs> How about that? I must modestly admit, I took to shooting like a duck to water, and only the promise of a plate of hot stew could lure me away. Come on, have some supper now. Enough shooting for today. A sense of cozy warmth flooded through me that evening. Perhaps the result of the stew and the crackling fire, but more, I think, because of my growing confidence in my new way of life. I felt the city girl within me begin to fade away and the mountain girl grow stronger, just as the clean mountain air in my lungs was replacing the sooty coal smoke of St. Louis. We talked for hours. Pa told me that he had befriended most of the animals in his valley, one of the few areas in the mountains not ravaged by the fur trappers years before. The wild creatures knew that the gruff miner killed only for food, as did they themselves. Now it would be my responsibility to become as good a friend to the animals as Pa had become. I hoped so much that I could do it. Next morning, my chores began. I would do the domestic work, cleaning, cooking, feeding and watering the animals, until my gilt edges wore off and I could be taught the skills necessary to become a true mountain woman. Morning, Charlotte. Pa would continue working the mine, hunting for his elusive vein of gold. Some folks don't belong in a lady's boudoir. And stay out. I guess he was just getting even. How many times I wish there was a restaurant nearby.
At home, the woodmen came by with the wood already in little pieces. It's easy. See? There's always a smart aleck around. Here, you try it. Good girl. I was learning there's a proper tool for every job. Hit it right here. Just let it drop. How did he get in there? Sleep somewhere else. Go on. Go on. one morning, while I was working at the kettle, we had some visitors. Pa! They were the first wild Indians I'd ever seen up close. What's the matter? Pa had long been friends with Standing Elk and his tribe, and often traded with them. It's all right. They thought highly of this mountain man who dealt fairly with them when other white men cheated them with inferior goods and bad whiskey. The tanned hides they brought to trade were for me, to make tough buckskin clothes. This'll do fine. I'll get your gun. The only dress I had left was becoming tattered and worn. Yeah, good boy, Dad. Oh, no. Here you are. One Colt's revolver and one flask. They were well pleased with the trade and marveled at the first revolver they'd owned. but I wasn't too sure about them myself. When they finally took notice of me, they decided to invite themselves for lunch. The chief favored Pa's cooking and assumed mine would be equally good. Were they in for a surprise? No, it's soap. No, you can't eat that. All right. Now, Standing Elk was not one to suffer alone. Mm. Saving face was very important to him.
I do believe they felt very sorry for Pa. Your soap? <laughs> Darn panhandlers. <laughs> Often, on a warm, late summer morning, we would go fishing for our supper. Look at this. The streams of abounded one, with juicy trout, and there was plenty for everyone. <laughs> that ought to be enough for today. Many of Pa's local friends came to drink and fish, too. This was a grizzly bear named Bud, who was a bit of a mooch. Here, bud. I'll give you a fish. Save you the trouble. You don't want a fish. What's wrong? Come on, take it. Well, take it. There must be trouble nearby. Bears never turn down a free fish. A grizzly bear from a neighboring valley was searching out new hunting grounds. Grizzlies have their own territories and guard them jealously. There could be trouble. I don't like the looks of this. Be careful, Charlie. We better get out of here. I want to call. Hurry. Yeah, hurry. Get on the oh. there. Hurry up. Get on the other side. Huge animals tested one another, seeing if either was old or weak. But they were a close match. Bud was already master of his territory. The stranger backed down. All too soon, the warm summer grew old, and the trees on the mountainsides put on their golden coats. took time to show me around his valley and introduce me to some of his special friends. For instance, there was Senator, the cougar. 
Pa gave him his name because most of the time he would lay around doing nothing. There was Bud, who got his name for no reason at all. Mostly, though, I wandered by myself, enjoying the newfound freedom of the wild. I found as I wandered that most animals could sense my friendliness, and if I were cautious, none of them would hurt me. busy this morning. or trapped. I know it's around here somewhere. Although the golden age of the fur trade had long since passed, there were still hunters and trappers roaming the Rocky Mountains, trying to eke out a living by killing any fur-bearing animal they could find. For the few paltry dollars the hides might bring, 
They destroyed thousands of harmless creatures whose only crime was that they were beautiful. There ought to be a good half dozen just in this pond, Jack. <laughs> but nothing like that valley we'll find. We'll head north some tomorrow. Two of the worst offenders were Frank Sykes and Laramie Jack. Good shot. They had gotten word that there was a high mountain valley that had become a refuge for the hunted animals, and they were determined to find it. These cunning, treacherous men would no doubt ravage the valley, as they had done to many others. This time, the valley was ours. One morning, while his partner was caching furs in the North Valley, Frank found himself checking trap lines with a lame horse. He had no love for animals, even the sad old nag who had put up with his cruelty for years. Come on. Ah, oh, you rotten old buzzard bait. If resting would heal the horse's leg, the poor creature was out of luck. was hatching in Frank's mind. One that might get him a new horse and a bonus besides. He'd have to sneak up carefully. No need to make more work for himself than necessary. gentle for that, but he'd teach him an unforgettable lesson. not to shoot Bud with his pistol. The small bullets would have made the grizzly mad enough to kill. Help, no! Come on, get him! 
The next day, Pa and I returned to the beaver pond to thank Bud for saving me. Hey, Bud, what you doing? Bud was glad to see us. You silly bear. I wore my new buckskin pants, much more practical in the wild than my poor old dress. The silly bear wanted us to come swimming with him. He'd been running from pond to pond, trying out every one. First, he'd muddy up the water real well, and then spend hours trying to find his toes. Lost him again. There you are. Come on, Bud. No, I don't want to swim. Bud tried to get Pa in the water, but when that didn't work, Bud settled for a chase. <laughs> Things got back to normal, but not for long. While working a long, disused side tunnel, Pa finally had some success. Charlie! Charlie, look at this! You found it? There's not much of it, but it's high grade. He had hit a small pocket of high grade ore, which would yield us about $100 in gold dust. I'll start sluicing it off right away. We left for town in about a week to buy much needed supplies with what would be the last of our wealth for some time to come. Say, who's this pretty little lady? My daughter, Charlie. Charlie, this is Bert Jackson. Hello. Hi. It's nice to see you both. So, what brings you to town? We came to town for a few supplies for the next few months. I'm sorry, John. I can't give you supplies without cash. You're already into me for $30. Now, don't you worry. I've got a little gold from a pocket I hid up in the mine. You see how that is. Oh, it's nice looking dust. That ought to take care of my account and get us supplies for quite a while. Well, I'm sure there's enough here to cover your account and then some. So let's work on those supplies. All right.
Look. Oh. Oh, what beautiful lace. Her old man must have struck it rich. Gosh, she's the one you had to tangle with, huh? She, she don't look so tough to me. I told you it was her grizzly that done it. All right, all right, I was funning you. Let's sit down and have a drink. <laughs> Would I like to get even with her? Listen, you guys need a plan. A good plan. You need someone with brains to help you. You need me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about getting the old man to go. And that Charlie. Why don't we get them when they leave town? Nah. We gotta get the old man to tell us where he keeps the gold. We've gotta catch him alone at the cabin. Then you can worry about the girl. After we're rich. <laughs> I like that. really been good. It's a nice thing to get to town once in a while. I can imagine. You don't have to help load, Charlie. Well, I think these supplies should hold you through the winter. Well, it's been good, John. Next time you're in these parts, come on in. We'll see if we can help you out again. Well, take it easy. Yeah, take it easy. Morning. Howdy, fellas. Morning, Sheriff. Friends of yours? Not exactly. Pa was going to blast open new tunnels in the mine, and I decided to use the day for my own enjoyment, exploring the mountains and valley before the winter set in. I carried a pistol in case I should run into a certain trapper again. Fall in the Rocky Mountains brings with it a feeling of golden contentment and a sense of freedom that is found nowhere else on earth. I was a woman of the wilderness forever. I knew that deep in my heart.
friends of mine were having a difference of opinion. The badger wanted to dig a new home for the winter, and the coyote decided he wanted to dig a den in exactly the same spot. There were thousands of identical hillsides in the area, but being a coyote, he had to have that one. And being a woman, I wanted the fighting to stop. Badger and I finally won. I continued my ride into the next valley when suddenly I heard something. Groom pup of two of our wolf friends. I had to help. He had stepped in a trap meant for a smaller animal. Probably no bones were broken. Easy, boy. Easy. I'll help you. Now let's get this off. There. Let me see. I'll get rid of this thing. All right, let's get you home.
the reunion was a joyful one. The pup wasn't hurt bad, and his parents were very happy to see him. Meanwhile, Pa removed as much loose dirt as he could in order to plant the explosives deep in the mine walls. do to get my powder wet. Take a look inside. Keep your eye on the mine. Yep. Must be in here somewhere. Want around here. What are you doing in my house? Come to get your gold. I don't have any gold. Nothing but a lot of dirt. Well, you had a bunch in town the other day. That was just one little pocket I hit. You trying to tell me you've been up here for three years and you haven't got any gold? No, I haven't got any gold. Here you got a sweet little daughter, though. That's what. Oh. You all right now? Yeah. Stupid old man. Let's take a look around. We gotta find that gold here somewhere. Let's go in the cabin and get looking. It has to be in there. Jack, how about some whiskey? Yeah. <sighs> 
happened? Three men came to the cabin. They wanted my gold, but I didn't have any. They wanted you, gal. Men at our cabin? Yeah, they came for the gold and for you. They shot me. Huh? Pa, you need a doctor. Oh, it's too late, gal. You gotta take care of yourself from now on. Pa, uh, no. You know how to get along by yourself. Pa? I'll miss you, Char. No. Pa! With tears in my eyes, I ran to the cabin. I had to see if the men who had killed my pa were still there. We gotta find that gold and get out of here before that girl comes back. I don't know where it might be. Did you look everywhere? I looked everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you just see me shoot that old man. Maybe we ought to dig out the fireplace or something. That's <laughs> all. That's all for you. <laughs> You've got to <laughs> guard us. He's had all he can handle. Well, I'm gonna close one eye to see straight. Drink, will you? Drink the whiskey now. Get the gold. In a minute. Need another drink. You give me a drink. You don't drink so much, you ain't gonna feel like gold. I had to get some help before they left. I'd go for the sheriff. It would take most of the night, but maybe they'd get drunk enough and be there in the morning. down there. What do you want? Sheriff, my pa's been killed. They're still up at our cabin. You've got to come. They've shot Calm him. Calm down, little lady. Now, there's nothing I can do about bringing back your pa. But you're the sheriff. You've got to. They've shot him. And come them quick. guys ain't still hanging around out at your cabin. They're there. I know they are. I've had a rough day, and I'm mighty tired. Why don't you come back to my office in the morning? We'll take a ride out there and have a look-see. They'll be gone in the morning. They're and there. they're I probably know they're... gone already. In Could the you're... morning, young lady, in the morning. Now, good night. I arrived home a little after dawn. The three men were still there. I was determined not to let them get away with their horrible crime, even if I had to stop them myself. An idea came to me. There was a discarded bear trap of paws out behind the corral. I hated the thing, but I hated the outlaws even more. family of skunks provided the rest of the plan. What I'd do after that, I had no idea.
I would never see him again.
I buried my father that lonely afternoon. I then returned to the ruins of our life. There was nowhere else for me to go. I picked through the devastation that was once a snug, cozy cabin, hunting for undamaged articles that might be of some use to me. There was very little left. Some of Pa's old clothes were still usable and put the seed of an idea in my head. Most of the trouble had occurred because I was a girl and looked like one. Now that I was alone, maybe it'd be better if I was not a girl. I would become a boy. I could see it would take a lot of practice. Gotta act tough, walk tough, think tough. Oh! I gathered all the domestic animals together to leave this place and all its memories behind. Everybody wanted to come. sell the animals one by one to people who would care for them and then have money to live on. Finally, I sold my horse, Red. My break with the past was once again complete.
I took occasional jobs to make money for supplies, but never stayed in one place very long. Honey, but you know you're gonna be good as new in a week or so. Then maybe I can find you a job here in town. No oh, thanks, Katie. You've been real kind. But when I heal a bit, I'm gonna go home. Back to St. Louis? Uh, back to my pa's place. I'll rebuild the cabin and open the mine. And there's a lot of old friends I'd like to meet. Especially that grumpy old bear. Well, honey, I sure do wish you could see your way clear to stay with me a while. I've grown real fond of you, Charlie. Kinda like you was my daughter or something. Well, thanks, Katie, but I've made up my mind. And I'm gonna head back to the mountains now. But I do thank you for the horse. Aw, oh, this so nag. I won him last Saturday night in a poker game, and I sure ain't got no use for him. Well, I'd better be going. Well, honey, if you ever do get back this way, you know you got a home here and somebody that cares about you. Thanks, Katie. Sure, babe. Good luck to you now, and you take care. Bye, Katie. Your way. 